Let's suppose that we have a container of water that is rotating with constant speed v in a vertical circle of radius r. We are going to analyze the forces on the water in this container as the container moves around the circle. Now let's consider the resultant force on the water. Well, since we're dealing with uniform circular motion, we know what that resultant force vector looks like. It points towards the center of the circle and its magnitude is mv squared over r. Now let's get the forces on the water, the constituent forces of this resultant force vector. Well obviously we have the weight of the water. Now that can't be the only force acting on the water of course, um, because the resultant is a vector pointing vertically up, so there must be another force acting on the water, which I will call r. Now r is the contact force of the container on the water. Well, r without the arrow is the magnitude of the contact force of the container on the water. We know the direction of vector r must be vertically up because that's the only way that we can get a resultant force f which is vertically up. Okay, you see f is, uh, w is vertically down. So vector f equals vector r plus vector w. Of course, W is mg. By the way, we are not including the container in this problem. We're only looking at the weight of the water in the container. Now let's look at the container when it's in this position. One of the forces acting on it is, of course, the weight. Well, we're looking at just the weight of the water. So that vector never changes. Vertically down, its magnitude is always mg, where m is the mass of the water. Um, the magnitude of the resultant force never changes either. It's mv squared over r, because v is constant. And of course, R is constant. Um, now, what about the reaction force in this case? So the, the reaction force vector plus vector W must sum to give us vector F. So we can get a rough idea of where that vector is by this parallelogram construction. So vector R must be looking like this. You can see that vector R is changing. It certainly changed in direction and, and it will change in magnitude also. Now let's consider the water in this position. Again, the weight vector is vertically down, no, no change there for vector w, it's constant. Um, vector f, constant in magnitude, but you can see its direction is always changing. The direction has to be towards the center of the circle. Again, we can use the parallelogram law to find a vector such that when we add it to w, we get vector f. So vector r looks like this now. Finally, let's consider the, w the water when it reaches the top of the circle, assuming that it does reach the top of the circle, that the water hasn't fallen out. Um, the resultant force again, of course, same magnitude mv squared over r, this time pointing towards the center of the circle, of course, well, always pointing towards the center of the circle. Um, the weight vector is in the same direction as the resultant force vector now in this situation. And since the weight vector plus the vector r adds up to vector f, vector r must be in the same direction as vector w and vector f. So the vector sum is easy in this situation. We just add the magnitudes of r and w to get vector f. Okay, so let's uh, write down that equation for the magnitudes of the forces acting on the water at the top. So the magnitude of R is R without the arrow. The magnitude of vector W is just mg. And these two magnitudes must sum to the magnitude of F, which is mv squared over little r. Now here's an important point. If the water remains in the container, then the magnitude of R must be greater than zero. If you think about it, um, the con you know, if if R was equal to zero, or if R was negative, um, then the containers cannot be exerting a force on the, on the water. It's only when R is greater than zero that we have a force. You know, the container is exerting a force on the water. Um, okay, so at the top of the motion, this equation has to be true. Um, the minimum value that R can have is zero. 
So what we do is we just set r equal to 0 in this equation up here. So we get mg equals mv squared over r. So we can see that the minimum speed required to get the water fully around the circle doesn't depend on the mass of the water. M's cancel. So V is equal to root G times R. So to make sure that the water remains in the container, that is to make sure that R is greater than zero, we, may, we need to make sure that the speed of the container is greater than root G times the radius of the circle. Another way to say that is if V is greater than root GR, the water has enough inertia to stay in the container.